Hi, I'm Brownfield anchor reporter Megan Grebner, and with us is Madeline Heineke Thompson, precision agronomist with Advanced Agrolytics. Today, we're going to dive into fungicides. Uh, Madeline, to start us off, talk about uh, tell us a little bit uh, about where you're from, and talk to me about how the crops are progressing in your area. I'm from the Quincy, Illinois area, actually just 40 minutes east of Quincy. And right now our crops is kind of both sides of stuff has just come up out of the ground and it is getting its start and others, we we planted pretty early. And so we're, we're getting to canopy and, and capturing that early season canopy uh, that, we, that we've talked about and always emphasize on. And so right now it's, it's, it's always looking at how do we manage the crop today. And even though we've gone through this dry spell and, and going to go through more of that dry spell here in the next couple of weeks, we, we think and switch to managing that crop today. And what are those risks associated with that crop? And how can we build that factory as we move forward into that grain fill period with the both sides of the coin of, of having stuff pretty small, but yet stuff that has just reached canopy. This is the time of year where many growers are turning their intent, their attention and their focus into those in-season management decisions and thinking about protecting crops against those various risk factors. Madeline, as we go through the process, oftentimes that includes fungicide considerations. So when you're talking to growers, what recommendations do you have for them this season when it comes to fungicide applications? When it comes to fungicide applications, we really encourage growers to start by asking, what are we trying to accomplish by that fungicide application? And what are we thinking about within that pass and that timing? Are we thinking through, is it a disease management decision or is it more of a stress mitigation? Or could it be a factor of both during that time? And when we think about fungicides, it's similar to how we can think about running a business. And most times we, we almost need to meet, be in a growth mindset, thinking through creative ways, how we can expand that business and building off of that momentum of a successful start where some of these growers have already. And other times we need to be in, in more of a maintenance mindset where we need to think about stabilizing that crop or stabilizing that business. And how can we focus on forward progress as this crop moves forward? And, and just trying to stabilize and being in that maintenance mindset. And we can typically think about fungicides as fungicides as helping to maintain what yield we do have, but it can also be an opportunity for growth, especially under these stressful conditions that we've received. And it's it's kind of thinking through what are those, those points of factors that we need to consider and really thinking about what is that crop's potential today, even thinking about what are those grain prices for that new crop doing and how are they going to affect that, that decision ultimately? And are we managing disease versus stress at this time frame? Obviously weather, I would assume is part of that conversation, right? Yes. So, so with this current forecast holds, it kind of looks dry in, in parts of those mid vegetative stages for much of the Corn Belt, how does that influence those decisions then moving forward? It plays a huge factor in that decision making with, with this weather that is predicted. And growers need to think through what, what is that crop experiencing today in that time frame of that dry period with the heat and lack of moisture that, that we are receiving or will re be receiving it's that stress factor that we're trying to mitigate from. And so as we think about fungicide applications during that V6 to V14, how can that be used to mitigate that stress and thinking through those critical decision factors? And we did see a similar scenario in 2022 around the Corn Belt in some parts and some some not, not as much, but um, we understand the risk of this crop today as we think about the drought through this mid vegetative stages um, with those yield components as we think about rows around and how that might decrease our rows around. And even as we think about sucrose storage or that fuel in that fuel tank for that crop, it might be decreasing 
because it's going under the stress? Um, and what can we do to help that crop build that fuel tank? So when we go into that critical grain fill period, we can maximize that. And, and our team last year conducted research trials in 2022 in similar stress environments with a V10 fungicide application. And, and it really did show a, a physiological impact of that crop. And so with that V10 fungicide application, we saw an increase of about 8% in stored sucrose at that crop at that R1 timing. And so when we look at that, we're building a bigger factory and we're taking advantage of the, that grain fill period with that V10 fungicide application versus untreated areas of that field where that V10 did not. And so ultimately with the 2022 season, we did receive more adequate rainfall and a cooler grain fill period that we were able to capitalize on. Um, and so that V10 fungicide did show a profitable return on that investment. Um, and unfortunately we can't predict what will happen in, in the grain fill of 2023, but we know we have these levers to pull in the vegetative stages with that fungicide application and how can it have a positive impact and reduce our risk from this heat and drought stress. Madeline, what about traditional full tassel fungicide application timing? Does that still come into play in, in that prep and in thinking about making plans for the rest of the growing season? It most certainly does. You know, even though we're still a few weeks away and even a month out for some, that application is still important or even thinking through, it's still needing to be assessed at that time of what we hope to accomplish with that fungicide application. And so thinking about those factors I mentioned earlier about how will it lead to the potential of that profitable return in different scenarios, you know, if we do see receive adequate rainfall um, for the rest of this growing season, it could increase that crop's potential that we have while increasing that disease factor that we may see during that critical grain fill period. And so fungicide will probably be most likely be a critical part of that late season management um, in that in that sort of scenario. If we do continue to stay dry, we need to still assess where we're at with that crop and, and thinking through is that fungicide treatment going to be a positive outcome and, and a profitable outcome for that, for that crop in that growing season. And that's dependent on especially the amount of stress it's already received and what it's likely to encounter. And as we think through what those critical periods are or critical factors of the, the grain prices, what is it going to cost for that treatment? And thinking, what is that expected final yield to really make us make a great decision on whether a full season fungicide application is, is necessary or not. And these growers don't have to make that decision alone. Our team at Advanced Agrolytics, we spend a lot of our time right now with our growers to help them navigate through um, these critical decision factors. And we understand the risk that is associated with the season and this, this weather that we are receiving. And we focus on the fundamentals to help them drive results on their operation. Anything else growers should be thinking about from your perspective or things that they should be asking as well? Yeah, from my perspective, we typically think of fungicide still today as helping to maintain what yield we have, but they can also provide that opportunity for growth under stressful conditions. And a key consideration should always be, what am I trying to accomplish with that application? This not only applies to fungicides, but it also applies to any pass that we're going to make throughout the field, whether it be nitrogen or a herbicide application. And ultimately we can't predict what's going to happen in the 2023 crop season, but we can be prepared for any scenario that comes our way. If folks want to find out more information or they want to get in touch with somebody at Advanced Agrolytics, uh, what's the best way for them to do so? Growers can visit our website at advancedagrolytics.com to find a precision agronomist near them, or they can also follow us on Facebook or Twitter. Madeline, thank you so much for your time this afternoon and this really fascinating conversation about how fungicides play a role and how they should play a role in our crops and our uh, crop health and ultimately yield at the end of the season. Thank you, Megan, for having me. It was a great pleasure to get to know you. That's Madeline Heineke Thompson, Precision Agronomist with Advanced Agrolytics. I'm Megan Grabner on Brownfield. 
agronomic expertise, cutting edge research, unbiased recommendations. Read the latest agronomic blog at advancedagrolytics.com.